I've just been reading M.L. Steadman, The Light Between Oceans. Wonderful story, debut Australian author, couldn't get published here. Uh, the book went to auction overseas. Um, she had nine, over nine publishers bidding for it, sold mm. it for a squillion. Um, it's a really wonderful story. It's set in the lighthouse uh, in Western Australia. We've got two characters, Tom and Izzy. They're newlyweds and uh, she keeps losing her babies. She has several miscarriages and then they happen upon this dinghy that washes up at the lighthouse. In the dinghy is a dead man and a live baby girl. Mm. And that's the premise of this story. It's really highly charged. It's very emotional. I felt at times it was like reading an action thriller where there's action on every page. There's emotion on every page. She really can yeah. write. She really sets the sense of place. Yeah, it's got a great sense of place, that, that, that uh, rock. Uh, Janus Rock, Beautiful. 100 miles off the coast of Western Australia in the vastness of, 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 of this And she gives this, you this a ocean. sense of the lighthouse yeah. and being there and, and the, the isolation. isolation. And the yeah. isolation, absolutely. And, and then you've got those two wonderful characters in this situation, um, you know, cut off from the rest of the world. And this baby, what do they do? Do they give it back? Do they tell someone? Do they keep it? And at the heart of the, this book is that single quite simple moral dilemma. What do you do? And with each of the characters, as they get woven into the story, the different kind of sort of perspectives change. And as a reader, you, you change with them yeah. about what you may or yeah. may not do. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I love Tom's story particularly. It was set in 1926. It's, you know, post First World War. His backstory was beautiful and really well told and really well researched. Mm. And it's that kind of, he's a damaged soldier. He's a damaged man. And so when he's presented with this moral dilemma, it's that sort of resonance from that sort of history of death and war. Mm. What he, does he do with new life? I didn't expect to enjoy this. I don't think I'm its ideal audience. <laughs> it is a love story. But it is a pure love story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but there, was, there were one or two great, tears at the end. Yeah, it's a um, great first novel. Yeah. It's a great first debut novel. Somebody who writes particularly well about Australia is Tim Winton. As far as Perth goes, which is where I'm from, um, probably Cloud Street because it's, it's all about Perth. Well, from one amazing Western Australian landscape to another. Right. This is, uh, this is a memoir, A Youth Not Wasted, uh, set in the early 1950s. So Australia, uh, riding on the sheep's back, uh, wool prices are at an all-time high, a 16-year-old Ian Parks decides to go into the, to the family business and become a jackaroo on a sheep station. So starting off in South Australia, he goes to Western Australia and over four years goes from Jackaroo to Stockman. What got me into it uh, was this, this is an amazing prologue. The prologue is written from the perspective of, 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 of a much older man um, returning to, this, uh, to the outback and, and re-experiencing the kind of um, the, the, the power of the, the, the stillness and the kind of blankness. And the connection and, to land and place. Yeah. Yeah. from a deeply personal level yeah. of a life and, lived. And yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 and it's it's amazing piece of writing. Um, the body of the text, this this four years of, of, of his experience, it didn't show yes. me how he came to... It was really not dry a... writing. Yeah. It was just, the, there was nothing there for me to hang on to. There was no interest, no character, you know, nothing. For me, what it was, was an account of his time. Yeah. Mm. It's an account. It's not a sort of a, a memoir where it's sort of a, there's a through narrative and, and, and things have picked up and worked. We didn't get a story of the journey yeah. over those four years for him as a human being, but as an account of what it was like in the outback in the early 50s and sort of the, the detail. There's a lot to be said for it. I'm not quite sure who this book is aimed at, who's going to read it. I think it was just an old man telling us a story about what happened to him in the past. Mm. I'm not quite sure that a lot of us care about that. For, for me, there were some highlights in it. Um, the, some of the characters, the out-camp men, living on their own, the far distant kind yeah. of reaches of, of, of these cattle stations, essentially, um, you know, living on their, living on their wits. The um, the relationship with the the, the Aborigines on yes. the land and the, the station managers yes. was really quite interesting. Um, and it's also it's a kind of station life that doesn't exist anymore. I no. mean, back here it's all it's all horses. Nowadays, being a stockman means motorcycles and helicopters. Uh, so look, there's there's interest in the historical record, yeah. the historical detail, as a, as a piece of as writing, a record and an account. It's a real shame that this guy <laughs> can't write. I mean, yeah, great story, but uh, you know, comparing it to AB Facey, Fortunate Life, it's this a big is true. stretch. This is true. Lockie. Look, yeah. the 
the potential that the prologue showed I didn't feel was, no. was lived up to in, in the body. So at the moment, the Australian author I like most is probably Helen Garner. I can tell you my least favourite Australian author, Patrick White. <laughs> really haven't got the time. <laughs> well, when I read Patrick White as a high school student, uh, it's one author that English, studying English literature turned me off. Yep, it I'll admit that. Uh, yeah, really and truly. Uni, I failed to read Voss. Yeah, Solid Ma Mandala, Tree of Man. I would have been happy never to read another word. But I returned to Patrick White through my background in theatre, through his plays, Season of Sarsaparilla, Ham Funeral, and now this book. This manuscript, okay. which is the first part of an intended three-part novel, was sitting on his desk when he died in 1991. Patrick White had left instructions with his literary executives to destroy everything. Mm. She didn't, and it's... And thank it, God she thank did. God. Thank God she did it. It takes us back to wartime Sydney, a time when the tensions between sort of uh, what was happening overseas and Australia, it is a time when in a predominantly British culture immigrants were coming from the war on the other side of the world. And two of those, are the, the two children at the heart They're of gorgeous. this... gorgeous. That relationship was so unique. It was yeah. so beautiful. The boy, his mother, died in the London Blitz. The girl, her, her father, was executed as a communist in, in Greece. But what I found, what caught me, is the man can write and sum up about atmosphere, about landscape, and in particular about character. He is scalpel-like with his descriptions, absolutely scalpel-like. And just, this is what I love, this is what made me smile on every page. Let me read you a little bit about Mrs Bullpit, with her arms moulded from natural marzipan. The curls had a varnished look, and though they may have been freshly done, they gave no life to Mrs Bullpit's flesh. They only emphasises its dead pallor. Then she takes out a lipstick from her bag and bloodies her mouth. She looks at herself in the little driver's mirror, mumbling on her lips, working the stuff into the cracks. And there, in those sh short sentences, you have the tragedy of a whole life. This is wonderful. She was a wonderful character too. I mean, he really got that. There was a real sense of place, there was a sense of character. I mean, you were there. I mean, you mm. were in that garden. And I will be reading more Patrick White. Mm. I'll be rediscovering him. Mm. Mm. I, um, I, I, I struggled to get into it. Um, about page 76 or thereabouts, I finally got what he was doing. It's not an easy read by any means. I um, disagree with that. I actually found oh. it very light. It's quite old fashioned. Um, it's modernist in style, Modernist. there's shifting perspectives. Um, and I think, I think perhaps White was sort of heading in different directions, sort of feeling his way into the story. It, look, it, it, look, it has to be said that this was the manuscript as it appeared yeah, as it on was. his desk yeah. as he died. It's mm. unedited. Just but I dis part. disagree with you. I know where he, he was heading. Mm. You know, I got mm. it. And in fact, the multiple the perspectives mm. kind of refracted the story mm. in different ways and created mm. different layers. Yeah. He, it's a reason why he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Yes. You'll find it in there. Alex Miller writes beautifully about the landscape of Australia. I think William McInnes. Craig Sylvie, who wrote Jasper Jones. Now, what more could we ask for than that story said in Fremantle? I loved Jasper Jones. Mm. Craig Sylvie is one of my favourite Australian mm. authors. Mm. What about you, Lockie? Well, I've got two. You've got uh, two? For yeah. the country. Tim Winton, uh, Dirt Music. Uh, for the city, uh, Christos Sulkis, The Slap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No question. So no urban question. and rural. Yeah, urban yeah, I get area. that, I yeah. get that. What about you, Michael? A perennial, David Maloof. Oh, and, in fa and in fact, lovely. 12 Edmondson Street is that oh. memoir is fantastic. Oh. And the other one, I have a five year old. And what makes us continually laugh? Jackie French's Diary of a Wombat. Yes. It just it's fantastic at night. <laughs>